Okay, guys, this, now you're going to do some story problems on exponential, like using exponents with growth, what we call growth and decay. Now, I want to direct your attention to this orange sheet of scratch paper. Just watch. Now, this first one seems pretty basic. Probably a fourth grader could probably do this part. I don't mean to sound insulting to you guys, but it is. It's, it's illustrating a point. Okay. Let's say I have five hundred dollars and I earn fifteen more fifty more dollars every year. So year zero means your beginning amount that you have. Okay, so five hundred. Then after year one, we earn fifty dollars more, so that would be up to five fifty. And then fifty dollars more. Now I'm at six hundred to six fifty to seven hundred. To 750. Okay, well, that's like no duh. Now, that's why, since that always increases by 50 every time, it's what we call linear. So that's why we were always representing those kinds of problems with lines. Okay, like xy, mx, y, and then x right here. You know, at year zero, you started with $500. You're going up by 50 every year. So then, of course, the equation we could write is $500 plus 50x, which means 50 times x equals y. Okay, so that's what we call linear because it goes, like, in a constant amount. It goes in a straight line. Okay, now the game's going to change. Let's say I have $500, but it increases by 5% every year. Not $5, 5%. So at year zero, I start with $500. Now, do you want to add 5 onto that, 500? Because you're like, oh, it goes up 5%, why not just add 5? Well, you'd be wrong because you can't do that, okay? You can't take a percent and add it to a money amount. They're totally different labels. They're not like terms. You can't be adding percents onto money. With percents and money, what the normal operation is to multiply, okay? Now, multiply by what? Well, here's what you need to think of. $500 represents 100% of your money, okay? And then we're increasing by 5%. So it's like I maintain 100% of my money, and I'm going to get another 5% added every year. So that's 105%. And then as a decimal, that's going to be 1.05. Anything over 100% as a decimal is one point, okay? So when I multiply 500, I'm going to multiply it by 1.05. Okay, so on your calculator, I figure out what 500 times 1.05 is. And now I'm up to $525. Makes sense. Okay, then the next year I go up by another 5%. So I'm going to times by 1.05 again. So 525 times 1.05. That's $551.25 that I have in, after, in year two. Okay, so that's now your new 100%. You're getting 5% added, so times 1.05. That's going to be $578.81. Okay, times 1.05. That's 607.75. And times by 1.05. You always want to round off to the nearest cent when you get 638.14. Now, my questions for you guys is, first off, when we're writing the equation out, what did we start with? We started with $500.
What did I times by every time? Well, I took it times 1.05, so times 1.05. How many times did I take it times 1.05? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Well, whenever you repeat a multiplication, you need to use an exponent. Okay, to shorten the procedure. So I so there were five years, so I did it five times, so to the fifth power. And that could have just as well got me my answer. Okay, just like that. Now, what's happening here is we're going up. We're definitely going up, but unlike the last page, we're not going up by the same money amount every single time. Therefore, it's not a line. What it forms is like a curve. Okay, because it goes up, but not by a constant amount. So instead of a line, we're going to be using a curve. Okay, so enough with that spiel. Let's go look at some problems where you could actually use this. And it is a beneficial thing to have for actual real life purchases because you always see percents. You do. Okay. The original, the owner of an original copy of a comic book sold it at an auction in the year 2005. The owner bought the book in 1980 for $55. The value of the comic book increased at a rate of 3% each year. How much should the comic book be sold for now? So we're finding the money. Now we're back to having two units, money and in years. So we're going to make our little boxes here. Then we're going to make a pathway there. And then I'll be writing an equation here. That's how we handle two units. So my units I have are dollars and years. Those are the two things that change, hence our variables. We always know that X needs to be the time and Y needs to be the money. So per dollars per year. Well, something happens every year, but it's not a dollar amount, okay? It says 3% each year, not $3. So what you do if it's a percent per year, you need to get rid of that money and just put percent, okay? And the percent per year is 3%, and it's an increase, so you need to put an up arrow right there, okay? Now, with percents, as we saw in that thing, when something goes up by a percent, it increases in value, but not by the same amount every time. So instead of a line, what we need to make is a curve. And on that curve, to save yourself a big mistake, put a dot because that means multiplication. Just put that down now. Okay, so what I do is I do the X comma Y. But instead of M, what you're going to use is what I like to call G to the X power, okay? And then there's going to be a Y right there. There's a Y. I didn't have enough room, so I put that here. Instead of MX, it's going to be G to the X power, G standing for growth factor, okay? Okay, so how much money did we start with? So make sure that's set up. What did we start with? Well, we started with $55. Now, you need to get rid of your G, and here's what you do. You need to take 100%, and since you went up 3%, you need to add 3% to 100%. Gives you 103%, which, of course, is 1.03. So your G is 1.03, okay? to the x power, leave x alone, and now we can write our equation. We have $55, but instead of plus, we write times 1.03 to the x power equals y, okay? And then what we're going to be doing is replacing the X pretty much on all these problems. Now, you have to understand X stands for years, you know. Well, there's two years they give me in the problem. They give me 2005 and 1980. 
So to find out what you're going to put in for the X, you just subtract those. You'll always be replacing the X this year on these types of problems. You'll never be replacing the Y. I'll just tell you that. So I take 2005. Here, I'll even show it. We take the year 2005 minus the year 1980, and that tells me how many years this has gone on for, and that's 25. So you can put 25. Now you can get your answer because you can take 55 times 1.03 to the power of 25. Okay, So now we're at $115. I don't need the cents either. So you may go put $115 for your answer. Okay, next one. You put $125 in a savings account that earns 2% interest each year. 2% interest means it goes up. You make no deposits or withdraws. How much will our investment be worth in 10 years? Okay, so I want to find the how much our investment's worth, the money amount. So again, we have two units. So I've got money and I've got years. Okay. X would stand for years, Y would stand for money, and dollars per year. Now, again, we don't really have a dollars per year. What we have each year is a percent. So get rid of your money and put a percent, okay? And the percent is 2. And it's up, so it's going up by 2%. So when we have money in percents, we're going to use an exponential kind of deal. Use a curve, not a line. It should not be a straight line. And a time sign right there. Because otherwise, when people don't put that time sign, they, they'll get here and they'll write 55 plus 1.03. Well, that makes no sense. $55 plus plus 103 percent makes no sense at all. Okay, to add, they have to be the same label. $55 times 103% makes sense, but not plus. Okay, you put $125 in a savings account, so we've got X comma Y here. And a curve is different. It's G to the power of X and Y. Okay, so we have $125 to start off with here. Okay. Now, we need to find something that goes in for G. That's called our growth factor. And I'm going to be taking 100% and adding 2% onto it. Because I know when something increases by 2%, the growth factor is actually 102%. Which, of course, if we need to put it in an equation, is 1.02. So this is now 1.02 to the x power equals y. So we got $125 times 1.02 to the x power equals y. Okay, now we're always going to look to replace the x, and x is years, and we know that there were 10 years. Okay, so 10. Again, sometimes they'll give you two years amounts and you have to subtract them like you did here, or sometimes they'll just tell you the years. So I take 125 times 1.02 to the power of 10. That gives me 150, just go 152, round to the nearest dollar, okay? So we got Y and then we got 152. Okay, next couple. In 2004, a person purchased a car for $25,000. The value of the car decreased by 14% annually. Calculate the car's value in the year 2012. So you're finding the money of the car. So again, like on old school, we have two units. So we have dollars and years. X would be the years, Y would be the dollars. So dollars per year, what do we got? We don't have any. But what we have is for annually means it's per year. We have a percent per year. So get rid of your dollars and put percent. It's 14%, but it's decreasing, so it's going down. 
Okay, so the growth factor is going to be going down. Okay, made a small box, probably too small. So remember that curve is multiplication every time, not addition like a line is. Okay, so at the beginning we know we have, and then g to the power of x and then y. Okay, so at the beginning we have twenty-five thousand dollars. Now my growth factor, I so always start with 100%, but this time if I'm going down, I'm going to minus 14% instead of add, so that's 86%. And that is going to be 0 0.86. It's under 100, it's going to be 0 point. So the G is 0 0.86, okay? So now to write your equation, you have $25,000 times 0 0.86 to the x power, and then y. Okay, so there's the equation now. x is the years. That's the variable we're always going to look to replace. And I have two years, 2004 to 2012. It's a time span. So you just subtract 2012 minus 2004, and that's 8. So you're going to use 8 as your power. Okay, so I've got $25,000. I'm going to be timesing that by 0.86. And that goes on for eight years. So to repeat the multiplication, you have to use an exponent of eight. Okay, so $7,840 equals Y. Okay, now this is a problem that could be done in your head. I do realize that, or like without this crap, but I'm just going to kind of talk about, discuss how it's going to work. There are 128 teams at the start of a citywide three-on-three -three basketball tournament. Half the teams are eliminated. By the way, half means 50%. Are eliminated each round. How many teams are left at the beginning of the fourth round? Okay. Now, this one's kind of confusing. I probably definitely wouldn't put it. So we got two units again. So I've got teams and rounds as the units. Now, we don't really have a good uh, time unit here. That's definitely the X, but rounds is like the time. So that's X, and that's Y. So it would be teams per round. Well, each round, 50% are eliminated, so the growth, the team, that's 50%, so it's a percent per round, and it goes down. Okay, so since it's a percent, we're going to use the curve instead of the straight line. And the curve means it'll be times instead of addition. Okay, so at the beginning, we had 128 teams, and then instead of MX, it's G to the power of x. Okay, we got to get a g out of there. That's your growth factor. Well, you take 100% again, and this time your growth factor, it's going to be minus 50, which means our growth factor is 50%. So that's 0 0.50 or 0 0.5, whatever. Okay, so my equation I can write is 128 times 0 0.50 to the x power equals y. Okay, now, a lot of people will just put 4 in for that. That's incorrect, okay? This is the beginning of the fourth round, so how many rounds have we actually gotten through to this point? We've gotten through 3, okay? So we need to replace the x with 3. So 128 times 0.50 to the power of 3, and that gives me 16. There's going to be 16 rounds at the beginning of round 3. And if you think about it, it makes sense, because after round 1, you'd have half, you'd have 64. After round 2, you'd have 32. And after round 3, you'd be down to 16. Okay, now a couple pointers I want to give on this assignment. On this problem, just use 600 when you're using the problem. Don't write a bunch of zeros. And then on your answer, whatever your answer is down here, just put the word million after it. Or you can put times 10 to the 6th power. doesn't matter.
and then here you'll have to subtract the years and all that. Okay, let me know if you're having a problem. They don't take that long, but they do take a bit to explain in a way that makes sense.